Nestled in the heart of the Middle East but facing the Indian Ocean, surrounded by the United Arab Emirates to the north, Saudi Arabia to the west, and Yemen to the southwest, the Sultanate of Oman is part of what we can still name Happy Arabia. Oman has only been open to tourism for about 15 years and is still relatively uncrowded. Yet it has a very large number of assets, mountain fortresses, fortified adobe villages, ruins of the Queen of Saba, palm groves and oases with emerald-colored waters, sublime expanses of desert, not to mention 3,200 kilometers of coastline and more of 1,700 kilometers of beaches. It is a small state of less than 5 million inhabitants, an independent monarchy ruled by a sultan, a regime qualified as authoritarian, but nevertheless considered the most democratic of the whole peninsula, ranked among the most stable and secure in the world. It is this country that we have chosen to discover in this month of February 2022. Muscat, the capital, set on the coast of the Gulf of Oman, is one of the oldest cities in the Middle East and a kind of anti-Dubai. Here, no skyline or skyscrapers. On the contrary, there is a preference for small buildings with white or whitewashed walls, windows with mashrabiya, and some large mosques stand out with their minarets in the middle of the city. Among the liners, speedboats, and tankers, you can admire many dows, another name for the traditional Arab wooden dows with one or more masts, which anchor in the bay. The Mutra Souk, one of the oldest in the Arab world, is actually called Al Falam Souk, which means Souk of Darkness, because it was originally made up of a multitude of narrow and dark alleys. It is now fully covered. It is the main place of supply for the inhabitants of Muscat. Like other Oriental souks, you can find everything there. Gold, jewelry, clothes, fabrics, spices, kuma, traditional Omani headgear. And of course, myrrh, the aromatic gum resin produced by the incense tree of the same name, real national treasure. Muscat comes alive considerably at dusk, when the heat subsides. The women, almost all dressed in the Shador, are out for various purchases, and the men gathered to chat. The new Muscat fish market takes place in a building whose roof evokes the elegant scrolls of Arabic calligraphy. The sale is done by auction, as in all ports, in the midst of a joyful hubbub. On the stalls, a wide variety of fish, trevally, barracuda, red mullet, yellowfin tuna, sharks, rays, or rock and reef fish, such as spotted grouper. fishermen gather their loot before going to negotiate it. The seagulls stay nearby to enjoy the leftovers. their satisfied air, the harvest seems substantial. A must on a visit to Muscat, the Grand Mosque of Sultan Qaboos. A monumental jewel of the capital, it is also a recent monument, as it was built between 1995 and 2001. A clever mix of traditional Islamic, Omani, Iranian, Mongolian, Turkish, and modern architecture. The main minaret exceeds 91 meters. The central dome, meanwhile, is 50 meters high. This monumental place of meditation can accommodate 20,000 worshipers. In the men's prayer hall, the mirab indicates the direction of Mecca. 
The Austrian crystal chandelier weighs 8 tons and is 14 meters long. It is the second largest candlestick in the world, after that of Abu Dhabi, set with 24 karat gold. The stained glass windows were created in France. Teak wood comes from Burma. The Italian marble floor is covered with a 35-ton carpet designed in Iran and made by 600 women. After a first day of immersion in the capital, we take the road to Sur, a small coastal town southeast of Muscat. On the way, we stop at Wadi Shab. Wadi means riverbed, a deep canyon, more or less protected from the sun with emerald waters, a peaceful moment in the silence of the rocks. The Sour Dao factory, which made the reputation and prosperity of the city, perpetuates the centuries-old Omani tradition of wooden Dao's. Positioned on the lagoon, it mainly employs Indians from Kerala. Half a dozen men work there full-time, and even if the yard only produces one or two a year, six months are needed to build such a boat. Its design is meticulous in the rules of the art. Woodworking mostly by hand, caulking with shark grease and plaster. The Dao, a traditional sailboat with one or more masts, a large hold and a long thin hull, is a commercial vessel mainly used to transport heavy objects, food or fresh water along from the coasts of eastern Arabia. At the end of the morning the next day, we decide to take a motorboat ride to meet the dolphins. We find a boat pilot at Ras Al Had, the easternmost point of the Sultanate of Oman. After more than 40 minutes at sea and a few exchanges with fishermen, we finally find them. A whole cohort of cetaceans spinning at high speed on either side of the boat. After a full speed return, the docking is done Omani style, literally landing on the beach. On the road to Bidia, our stage in the desert, we take the time to discover Wadi Bani Khalid, an enchanting interlude between mountain and desert. Its natural pools are the most famous in the country and a popular vacation spot for Omanis. At the end of the afternoon, we enter the Wahiba Sands Desert. To be able to drive in the dunes and the sand, the local guide who was waiting for us at the meeting point 
deflates the tire pressure of our four-wheel drive by a third. We drive nearly half an hour to reach the camp. The light takes a particularly warm orange turn in the ocean of sand. Our pilot offers us a trip to the dunes to admire the sunset, a unique roller coaster moment. The sun is rapidly decreasing now, constantly changing the colors around us. The show is exceptional. We are alone in the world, in the immensity of sand. The wind picks up at sunset, setting off a foam of sand on the dunes. The show is grand. We enjoy it in silence until nightfall. After a remarkably calm evening, a dinner consisting of salad, hummus from an excellent tagine, delicious Omani dates, and a good night under the Kaima, Arab tent, we close the desert parenthesis to head towards the Hajar Mountains.
Ibra is announced by the watchtowers that line the hills that surround it. It was once divided in two for reasons of tribal disagreements and lived mainly from agriculture, dates, fruits, and different types of vegetables, which are still found on the stalls of the souk. Nearby, we stroll through the alleys of the old fortified city of Al-Manzifat, surrounded by a defensive wall still standing, but now emptied of its inhabitants. Most of the buildings are in ruins, but these look great and retain some semblance of vaults decorated with oriental motifs and several two-story houses with ornate windows. Nizwa, the former capital of the kingdom, has many assets, starting with its majestic fort. But this Friday morning, we go from early morning to the bottom of the ramparts, where the famous cattle market of the city is held every week. Buyers and sellers of goats or sheep rub shoulders, gauge each other, exchange, feel the animals and negotiate in a constant hubbub. The men wear the traditional Omani costume, a long, sober white dress without a collar, wearing the kuma or masar, turban wrapped around the head. The few women present are dressed in colorful dresses, veiled, and adorned with the black leather or gold mask typical of the Bedouins, which surrounds the eyes, the bridge of the nose and the mouth to conceal their face. Each end of the square is a scene of life and portraits, a cultural dive into a part of everyday life. The souk, outside and around the citadel, unrolls a maze of alleys full of colorful stalls and stalls. The products are varied, fish, fruit and vegetables, dates, lively atmosphere and uplifting scents. Further on, pottery, one of the country's most active traditional sectors. Omani potters are renowned for the quality of their hand-turned pottery. It is also every Friday that the old arms market takes place. The men are there in large numbers. They try out the guns, sometimes very old or roughly repaired, and fiercely discuss the prices. There are also jambias, daggers with short curved blades worn at the waist in Arab countries, but also cartridges of all types retail or in belts. Further on, the souk with basketry and colored lamps, another specialty of Oman. and of course, the essential spices. The city of Bala was once surrounded by a wall of more than 12 kilometers, pierced by seven gates. Its fortress, the most imposing in the country, listed as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, was built in raw brick between the 12th and 15th centuries. It forms a fascinating ensemble made up of rounded towers and crenellated parapets, numerous staircases, courtyards at all levels, a maze of completely empty rooms, niches, alcoves. From the walkway, the views of the surrounding oasis are superb. It has benefited from a masterful renovation of almost a quarter of a century. However, it does not present any furniture, objects or rugs, nor any explanations to understand the circulation. You quickly get lost in the maze of rooms of all sizes, half-story platforms, walkways, and watchtowers. A few kilometers away, 
The castle of Jibreen is renowned for its painted ceilings and its walls decorated with astonishing arabesques, its stucco or wooden moucharabiers, or its remarkably carved doors. Up to 300 people lived in this place, which also underwent a superb restoration in the early 1980s with a succession of corridors, stairs, and adjoining rooms. At the end of the hall, a staircase leads to the first floor and several reception areas. Beautifully woven rugs and silk cushions cover the floor in every room. On and second floor, one can see the rooms of the guests and the apartments of the family of the Sultan. This part revolves around a magnificent patio. At the bottom of Jebel Akhdar, Tanuf is an old, partially ruined village in Oman, built on a cliff over 300 years ago. Although it was destroyed in an RAF bombing in 1959, some remnants of old houses stand their earthen walls which fit perfectly with the cliffs that border it. The hamlet is still visited for the architecture of its unique irrigation system and well known to Omanis for its mineral spring, which bears its name, coming from the nearby valley. The palm grove is soothing and cool. We stop there for a long time. At the bottom of Jebel Akhdar, the small town of Al-Hamra is the oldest village in the Sultanate, 400 years old. Its Yemeni architecture, clay houses with narrow windows, two or three stories high, roofs whose frames are made of palm tree trunks are a living witness to the history of the region. A large part of the village is now abandoned, but the government is working to rehabilitate and redevelop certain buildings. Perched at an altitude of 1,000 meters in the heart of a splendid palm grove, Misfa al Abriyin is a traditional village built on the side of the mountain with steep slopes and narrow streets. You can stroll there to admire the mud brick houses and discover the authentic life of an inhabited oasis, which is increasingly frequented by tourists. In the morning, before the heat, we stroll below the village, along the Fajal, which irrigates the hamlet and the plantations, in a green gorge, following the hiking trail which leads to Rogan Castle. Gul is an abandoned village that merges with the hill on which it stands, in the region of the Grand Canyon of Arabia, named Wadi Gul, whose depth sometimes reaches one kilometer. It is bordered by a dry river, a beautiful palm grove, and some cultivated fields. The ascent of Jebel Shams, which means Mountain of the Sun, is the highlight of a circuit in the mountains of the Sultanate. With its 3,009 meters, it is the highest in the country. Landscapes of high plateaus, large arid spaces, canyons dug by rivers and breathtaking views on all sides. The four-wheel drive is required to face the winding and sometimes rutted tracks that lead to its summit.
panorama is breathtaking. We go from steep slopes to lunar plateaus until we get lost on paths strewn with sulfur concretions. On the tenth day of our trip, we complete our journey in the Hajar Mountains by climbing the steep and dusty route that ends in Wakan, an agricultural hamlet perched at 2,000 meters, which overlooks the surrounding mountains and offers a spectacular view of Wadi Mistal. At sunrise, the cold is sharp. However, we have breakfast outside to enjoy the incredible panorama. The track that crosses the village to lead to the overhanging watchtower winds through beautiful terraced gardens, revealing magnificent landscapes on both sides. The people of Wakan depend on agriculture for their livelihood. They grow a large selection of vegetables, pomegranates, grapes, apricots. After this bucolic morning, we hit the road again towards the capital, to conclude the first part of our journey by the sea. A stunning sunset ignites Al Bustan Beach. We take advantage of water at 30 degree to take an invigorating evening bath. Tomorrow we will take a one hour flight to go to the Dofar region, bordering Yemen. Salala is a luminous city, with its houses with immaculate facades, surrounded by palm trees, coconut trees, and its unique position between mountain, desert, and sea. The second city of the Sultanate owes its fame to incense. Myrrh, this resin with many medicinal properties, found on all the stalls of the souks. Salala can be proud of the quality of its beaches. 30 kilometers of a fine ribbon of white sand. About 30 kilometers from Salala, the small town of Taka, jewel of sardine fishing, stands out thanks to its small 19th century castle in perfect condition, from which you can admire the panorama of the city as well as the sea. The country's road network is of impeccable quality and cleanliness. It is also flanked by thousands of lamp posts. Wadi Darbat, one of the most beautiful in the Dofar region, is also the country's largest natural lake. This wadi descends the hills to throw itself into the sea, forming many waterfalls, some of which exceed 20 meters high. It is a privileged place of relaxation for Omanis, especially on weekends. Families come here to spend the day to picnic and rest under the foliage, lulled by the trickling of the waterfalls in the many crystal-clear water basins that dot the plain. Herds of camels wander through the wadi, adding to the magic of the place. The Great Fall of Darbat, also called Travertine Curtain, is a jewel that hides between the hills. It takes half an hour to walk there. The waterfall rushes between the jagged rocks to plunge into an emerald-colored gore of great beauty. This natural pool encourages swimming. However, 
You should not swim there because the worm that causes schistosomiasis infests the waters of the region. For this end of the trip, we treated ourselves to three nights in an eco-lodge built at the edge of the water in the heart of the Suli Nature Reserve, very close to Taka. Bamboo bungalows scattered close to the beach and connected by wooden pontoons because, in the reserve, the basins are flooded during the monsoon. The sunset splashes with its fiery tones the succession of coconut palms where myriads of crows cavort. The steep winding road that leads to the border post of Sarfait, called Furious Road by the locals, offers us sumptuous panoramas of Jebel Kamar. We are very close to Yemen. You cannot visit Dofar without going to Mugsail Beach. It is a major tourist attraction. A vast expanse of golden sand nestled in the middle of steep cliffs bordered by azure water, about 40 kilometers from Salala. During the season of Karif, the monsoon, seawater rushes into the cracks of the rocks, causing jets of water of more than 25 meters when the tide is high. Show very popular with tourists and Omanis. Jebel Amran is a small mountainous crescent whose rugged terrain is divided between narrow gorges and high passes. Its foothills are dotted with many incense trees in tropical vegetation. What better place to end our trip than its summit, from which we can embrace the entire Mirbat Plain? If a country deserves the name of Happy Arabia, it is the Sultanate of Oman. Authentic destination among the safest in the world, where hospitality is elevated to the rank of art, the homeland of Sinbad the sailor can only seduce, with its deserts and nomadic camps, its mountains and fortified villages, its 1,700 kilometers of beaches lined with coconut trees, its vertiginous canyons, its many palm groves, and its oases with turquoise springs nestled in the wadis, a haven of peace in the heart of the Middle East.